This is the Morning Swim Show Streamline for Tuesday, January 19th, 2010, bringing you news from aquatic sports around the globe. We've got a lot of news to catch up on, starting with the FINA Bureau meeting last weekend in Thailand. One of the most controversial decisions they made was to table the discussion regarding swimming world records. Federations around the world have made various recommendations to FINA, from removing the world record set during the high-tech suit era to creating two world record lists. FINA is going to revisit the issue at its next meeting in the summer. Other big decisions made at the meeting regarded swimsuits. Uh, open water swimmers they have until June 1st to wear those high-tech suits. After that, full body suits will still be allowed, but they must fully consist of textile material. The FINA 10K Open Water Marathon continues February 6th with a stop in Argentina. Master swimmers must conform to the new swimsuit rules immediately, which means no suits that go, be uh, go below the knees. U.S. Master Swimming is meeting later this week to formally issue their interpretation on the ruling. In Morphina news, the organization is retesting all the blood samples from last year's World Championships. FINA announced this week that they will check for plasticizers, which are tiny particles of plastic from blood bags used for blood doping. If plasticizers are found in any of the samples, FINA will have proof that some of the swimmers blood doped. So far, none of the 391 samples from the World Championships have previously tested positive for any kind of performance enhancers. Well, back here in the States, several big meets took place over the weekend. In Long Beach, California, Michael Phelps and several other big swimming stars competed in the second stop of the USA Swimming Grand Prix Series. Matt Gravers was the performer of the meet, winning five of six events. His biggest win came with a 43-06 in the 100-yard freestyle, edging out Jason Lezak's 43-3. Katie Hoff got back to her winning ways in Long Beach. She won the 400 IM with a 404.39 and placed second or third in multiple events. She won the High Point Trophy on the women's side. Phelps won three events, including an exciting 400 IM in which he battled with Japan's Hidamasa Sano for the entire race, but Phelps used his patented final 50 push to pull away from Sano and win with a very impressive 338.42. On the other side of the country, in New Jersey, Elizabeth Beisel posted some fast times in long course competition at the CeraVe Invitational. Beisel's top swim was the 400 IM, where she swam a 440.87 to win by 8 seconds. Beisel was very busy last weekend. She swam 8 events at the meet. Swimming World TV was there streaming the finals live, and you can see every race on Swimming World TV. And Nick Thoman continues to prove he's among the Best backstrokers in the world with a couple of strong swims at the SMU Classic in Dallas last weekend. Thoman swam a 45.99 in the 100 back and a 141.8 in the 200. You can read more about that meet on our college channel at SwimmingWorld.com. And finally, a former collegiate swimmer was found dead in the rubble in Haiti last week. Ryan Clues, a breaststroker from UC San Diego, was working in Port-au-Prince as a medical volunteer with his sister when the earthquake hit and crumbled the hospital where they were working. His sister was injured but is now recovering in a hospital. Ryan attended Arcadia High School in Phoenix and graduated from UC San Diego with degrees in biochemistry and cell biology. He had planned to attend medical school in the fall. And our thoughts go out to his family. And that is the news for today. I'm Peter Bush reminding you to keep your head down at the finish.